the call of God to us, it starts with Isaiah 40, verse 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will soar on wings like eagles. That's a supernatural work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. That's how you can run and not be weary and walk and not faint. By this verse, you see the power of God and you see the design of God for you and me, and that is God wants to take you higher. In Psalm 3, verse 3, David said, God is my shield. God is my glory. He's the lifter of my head. What's it look like to soar? What's that mean? The metaphor of soar on wings like eagles. It can look like Peter, who after his worst failure of denying Jesus, Jesus finds him. Jesus graciously forgives him and reassigns him to that place of purpose. And just weeks after his worst failure, he is the preacher on the day of Pentecost, the birthday of the church. And 3,000 people are brought into the kingdom of God. In Acts 4, people recognized that Peter had been with Jesus. They said he's an ordinary guy, but we see courage. And we recognize that he's walking. They recognize someone on another level. He had been taken higher. Failure wasn't greater than the power of God to allow him to soar in his destiny. It could look like David who wrote Psalm 3, who was being hunted by King Saul. King Saul was so jealous he wanted to kill David. And David recognized that God kept taking him to a new level because God was his shield. God was present with him, his glory, and God lifted. Nothing could stop the destiny of God from happening in David's life because God is greater than people and God is greater than circumstances. God oversees with sovereignty, authority to get us where he wants us to be. God says we can soar on wings like that of an eagle. Wow. We are told in the New Testament, in the book of Philippians, that the call of God, it's upward. It's an upward call. From the Old to the New Testament, we see a strong emphasis on being rooted in the presence and the Word of God so we can flourish. But just as you see all this speaking about being rooted and grounded, then we also are called to have wings, to soar, to always go to the next level. And we do that by God's help and God's power. I want you to answer the call at the end of this service to go higher. We'll discover even more what that means as we look at Ezekiel 37. The hand of the Lord was on me. And he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord and he set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Let me pause there for a moment. Just how powerful is the word of God? If in that context, there would be the ability to hear. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I'll make breath enter you. You will come to life. I will attach tendons to you. I will make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, 
a rattling sound, and the bones came together, came together bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breath, from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. Let me pause there and just tell you the word breath in the Hebrew language is the word ruach, which is the word spirit. It's the word used in Genesis where the spirit, the ruach, hovered over the face of the deep. In the New Testament, the word spirit in Greek is pneuma, the wind, the presence. In Genesis, when God breathed, it, the spirit of the man, the spirit of the man, not just flesh, but the essence of the man was from the ruach, the spirit of God that, that moves to do something that allows you to actually go to a new place. That's what happens here as breath entered them and they came to life, stood up on their feet, a vast army. The detail of the valley, it's about as desperate as it gets. Full of bones, they're very dry, they're scattered. But Ezekiel is challenged to prophesy to these bones. And as he follows through in what God told him, we get a picture of what it looks like for God to take us to a new place. It says that bone came to bone. There was, there was this restoration. When God does a fresh work in your life, it may be that of restoration. I read it in verse 7, I believe. I'll go back. It says, there was this rattling sound, and the bones came together. Came together. That, that just went off in my heart. And God told me to say to somebody, it's going to come together. It's been fragmented. It's been divided. It has been, like, messed up. And it seems impossible. But I believe the word to you is that it's, it's going to come together. So what does it mean, this metaphor of soaring? For you, it's that it's going to take shape. Finally, after all the pressure, the burden, it's coming together. There was formation as this shaping work of God happened. There was strength, and then there was life. Notice it wasn't enough. To have formation, there must be life. And so the life filled them, and then it says they stood up. They stood up. It may look for you like a, a, a fresh, powerful standing against something that you should be against and standing for those things that you know matter. But it's not just you standing. It's the power of God working in you to give you traction. This is a word to somebody, you may have been knocked down, but this is the stand up and the recovery work of the Holy Spirit. The same spirit that raised Christ is the presence we're talking about today. The same presence that raised Christ quickens, brings life to us. The word resurrection means the stand up and the recovery. When I get knocked down, it's the Holy Spirit in me, a spirit of resilience that causes me to stand again, to find footing, to find traction, and to be able to move forward. They stood, they stood as a vast army. What's an army do? An army goes on mission. So the picture we're getting is that God gives life, strength, formation, restoration, and you get back in your destiny. You start walking again in your purpose. 
you start sensing the expectation that's associated with walking in God's design for your future. It's amazing. I felt in my heart God saying, I want to stir people. I want to lift people. And I want to move them forward. What does wind do? It stirs, lifts, and moves. The work of the Holy Spirit today to just stir you. To say, hey, this message is for me. And then his spirit goes to work to lift you, to move you. So that's the picture, but how, how does it happen? What, what role do we play in this occurring? And I want to talk to you about how life takeoffs require a runway. What do we do with this runway that God is giving us? The first word is just that of alignment, like the plane that gets aligned with the center line, and then it accelerates. Can you align your heart with this message? See, if everything's going well, you're ready to go next level. But if you are in a valley like Ezekiel, and it seems hopeless, why even accept a message like this? You won't unless you do it by faith. I'm saying, will you align your heart with this word from God that he wants to take you higher? He wants to lift. He wants to encourage. He wants to change things. He wants to make a difference. Can you align your heart to that? Let me encourage you the way to align your heart when it's Difficult is through praise. When you praise God, it changes your perspective. When you praise God, you get your eyes off of all that's wrong in your situation and you get your eyes on all that is right with God. You feel hope rising because praise fixes your focus on the fact that God is still in control. And when I don't see it, he's working. When I don't feel it, he's working. And he never fails. Come on and bless the Lord with me, we sang today. David, in one of the Psalms, he is commanding his soul. He's in a tough place. And he makes a choice to bless God. And by the end of the Psalm, you see the work of God within him where the praise is now flowing like a river, like it's unstoppable. But he made a choice to align his heart with a promise, but he had to praise God to get his perspective into a right place. Would you be willing today? I give that opportunity to just praise God right in the face of the valley. Whatever it is, whatever it looks like, I'm going to declare the goodness of God. Whew, I feel this right now. I am going to, by faith, I heard Mark Batterson make an interesting statement. He said, sometimes I prophesy my praise. He went through a life-threatening situation, and, and God gave him a song and he would just sing that song over the sickness that he was going through. And he said, I prophesied my praise. I like that. That's what I'm talking about. I'm saying, can we praise him before the river ever parts? Can we praise him before the wall comes down? Can we praise him before the healing comes? Can we praise him on this side of it? Can we get in alignment with what God can do. See, I feel like we're going to break through something here today. Sometimes to get a breakthrough, you have to have some go through. And the go through is praising God even when it's a sacrifice of praise. I, I will, choice, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving. I will enter his courts with praise. I hear Job saying to me today, 
I didn't need any kind of circumstance to line up for me to keep my trust in God. My physical condition said deny him. My wife even told me to curse him. Everything was the deepest and the darkest of places. But I just declared, naked I came and naked I will go. Blessed be the name. That's the praise I'm talking about. I'm, I, I am saying just in the rugged reality of, of what life can bring that I choose to praise God. And that's a line in my heart recalibrating my spirit so that then I can accelerate. That plane accelerates and the principles of aerodynamics take over and I, mean, I, I just don't know how it happens, but the plane takes off. All the luggage, all the people and that huge plane, there are principles in place that cause it to take off. And I'm saying when you and I align our heart through praise and we accelerate by declaring the promise of God, spiritual principles take over and the supernatural happens. When we entered Ezekiel 37, he gives us this description of the valley. Bones that are dry. There are many of them. They're everywhere. And the Spirit of God walked him back and forth. Description. Didn't deny it. Didn't ignore it. Confronted the brutal facts. This is it. But then God said, I want you to prophesy to these bones. I want you to say, hear the word of the Lord. And something that challenged me in reading this, I don't know how many times I've read it, I've just never been gripped by the Holy Spirit to notice that when Ezekiel starts declaring the word, it is even more detailed than that of the valley. And so before anything happens in that valley, Ezekiel starts declaring the promise of God. And he says this, as he is declaring, he says, the bones started coming together. Uh, let, let me give it to you. He says, I will make breath enter you. You will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you. I will cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. So here are all these bones. It's just messed up. And Ezekiel, before anything happens, he says, here is the word of the Lord. Going to make breath come into you. Going to bring tendons. Going to cover you with skin. Going to put breath in you. How awkward was that? As awkward as when you are challenged to speak out loud the word of God in the face of something that seems impossible. That's how awkward it is. Whenever somebody talks about, we've got to release our faith, we've got to release our faith, what does that even mean? To me, it is releasing the word of God over a situation. See, if I've aligned my heart and I, I have perspective, that being of the greatness of God, then I am ready to release the word over it, the marriage, the family, the business. After the 9 o'clock service, a man came up to me who owns a business. He said, I almost jumped out of my seat today. He goes, recently we've had a tough situation, and I was praying about it, and God kept saying, you're, you're quoting my promise. Get detailed with it. He said, I had told God I'd itemize the problem, but I was being general with the promise. And he said, 
God told me, he says, you're casting this care on me and you are telling me all the cares. Now I'm going to care for you. Be as detailed and descriptive with my promise as you are with the problem. Whoo. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying today, just list what God. And let's add Joshua here. When, when God said to Joshua, you are going to take the promised land. And he comes up against the wall of Jericho. He said, march around it on the seventh time. I'm going to tell you to shout on the seventh day. And, and the wall is going to come down. And you're going to take Jericho because I have delivered past tense, I've delivered them into your hands. It doesn't say I will deliver. It says I have delivered. Declaring the word is declaring the provision that's already in place. Now, I, I want you to, to wrestle with this if you need to, but I want you to know as people of God and the people that redeemed by the blood of Jesus and that walk in the power of the inerrant authoritative word. We have principles like this that position you to, to think differently and to speak differently. See, you, you'll hear all day somebody prophesying their fear, detailing the fear, the doubt, the negativity. But you are a son and a daughter of God. There's an empty tomb, and that means God can do anything. And that the spirit that raised Christ was the spirit that was present at creation, creative power, supernatural power, was the power that filled every believer who was gathered in that upper room. It was the power that swept 3,000 people into the kingdom on the day of Pentecost, it is the power, the Ruach, the Numa, the spirit that's in this room today so I can fix my mind on things above. And I can speak the words of life. And, I, and it's not my faith that's making the difference. It's his word. And my faith is not in my faith. My faith is in the word. Are you with me today? This is how we live differently. This is how we function in victory. This is how we praise through the valley, through the storm, through the sickness, through the division. We go through it because we have a different mindset and we have a different way of talking about it. So declaring it, being very detailed with that declaration, and you watch what God will do as the worship team comes today. The picture that I want to show you is that of a young man who is from Lawton. He's a police officer. He was in the Army nine years. And in 2019, on deployment, his friend was killed. And it broke something inside of this man. And, and that just led to a spiral of the worst of the worst. His wife was suffering from his suffering, his family, everything. And he heard a podcast about Mighty Oaks and thought, I'm going. And this past week, he came and went through the week of resiliency, the week of legacy. And at the graduation, reads right over here, they pick somebody to share their story. And Reed, who led it, they, they picked this young man and he stood up and he described that darkness. And then he said, but God, and started to describe the grace and power of Jesus that he had experienced all this past week and how he is going home a different person. How he, he's never known this kind of peace. He's never known this kind of, see that he's soaring now, isn't he? God's taken him higher. Say, so, well, what does it mean? It's this guy saying, I'm restored. 
I have strength. I'm standing again. I'm going to get back in my purpose. That's the word of the Lord today. He, he's a lifter. And as I sat there and watched and listened to him tell his story, I thought, that's it. That's it. This is what God can do. This is what God wants to do. And, and he's one of, of many that came this week and what, some 32 to 36 weeks like this will happen across the nation. And these men come as just out of despair. Most of them, it's kind of like a last ditch effort. Nothing has worked. They don't even want to be there, but you know, they're trying. And God meets them. God meets them through somebody who's soaring, who used to be down. God meets them through someone who says, I was that fragmented person in the deep, dark valley, but the Spirit of God swept over my soul. The Spirit of God restored me, put it back together. The Spirit of God has given me the ability to stand and move forward, stirred, lifted, moved, stirred, lifted, moved. Do you feel stirred today? Do you need to be lifted? Do you need to move forward? Would you stand with me, everybody? Worship team, if you'll come and join me. We're going to put it into practice. We're going to start worshiping. And as we praise God, this is a choice. If there's not one emotion that goes with it, doesn't matter. It's a choice. And I will praise God. I'm going to declare, I'm, I'm going to open my heart and start praising God. Then I, I am believing that the Holy Spirit's going to start changing your perspective. And then we'll come to that place where we're going to start speaking the word of God over our valleys. And we're going to say, God, would you lift me? Will you lift me? If you feel stirred as we start singing, I want to invite you to take a bold step. I want you to get out of your, uh, out of your aisle and come forward and just stand across this place. And we're going to put the message in to practice right now. We're not just going to hear this word. We're going to do it right now. And I just say, this is the word of the Lord. You're not going to leave the way you came. And if you have no faith for that, I do. I have faith for you because I have faith in the word of God. As a matter of fact, it was Ezekiel that gave instructions about the temple. He said, if you come to the temple and you enter by the north gate, you will exit at the south gate. If you enter by the south, you will leave by the north because no one will leave the way they came. 